Welcome to our video. In this video today, we're going to be looking at exercise four from the chapter 17 exercises for the 16th edition of the Financial and Managerial Accounting Textbook. So before we get started, I just remind you um, that in, in Brightspace, in our course, there is a section called reference materials. And if you go to that, and in the chapter 17 folder for process cost systems, there is a cost of production report template that I've created in Excel for your use. I'm going to be using that to organize the information that we are given in this exercise. Do we really need this template? Probably not, but it definitely gives us a consistent format to use. I would encourage you to use that for other exercises, for the problem, for the exam, however you find it helpful. Also, when I'm done recording this video, I'll be linking the video here in this reference materials folder, and I will also upload the completed template so that you can see what that looks like if you find that useful. So let's get started. We can see that we're given information about what happened in the baking department for this organization in the month of August. You'll also notice that we're given this information, which we will be given for all of the exercises and problems that we do in this class. Now that doesn't mean that that's how it always happens in the real world, but for our purposes, it does simplify our calculations. And again, it gives us a consistent way of looking at things. So. All direct materials are placed in process at the beginning of production. What that means is for the units, these 36,000 units that were in our beginning inventory, those were started in July. And so when those units were started in July, all of the, all of the materials were added in July. And so the cost of those materials is already included here in this beginning balance. Now these units were three quarters complete or 75% complete. What that means is there was 25% of the conversion work still to be incurred. 25% of the cost for conversion still needed to be added to those units. Then because we're using the FIFO approach first in first out, the assumption is the first thing we do is finish up those units that were in beginning inventory. And then we start some additional units. And so we started 200,000 additional units. So that means in total, we were working on 236,000 units during the month. We didn't finish all of those. We finished 196,000. And so that means there were 40,000 units still in ending inventory. Those units would have had all of their direct materials added because of this assumption we're told at the beginning. And they were half done, which means half of the conversion costs had been incurred. So with that in mind, let's go over to our template and start filling in what we know. So again, this is information that I've just reviewed. I'll be jumping back and forth between this template and the information given in the exercise so you can see where my numbers are coming from. So we had 36,000 units in beginning inventory. We started an additional 200,000 as we just discussed. And so that means we were working on a total of 236,000 units. For those 36,000 units that were in beginning inventory, under this equivalent units, you'll notice these columns here say equivalent units. And column C is for direct materials, column E is for conversion costs, and that carries all the way down through the template. That information we put in column C will relate to direct materials, and information in column E will relate to conversion costs. What we're calculating here in the part of the template that you can see right now is units only. So there's nothing in these first, um, this first part of the template that relates to dollars at all. We'll get into dollars in the next step, but right now we're just looking at units. And what we're trying to calculate here is how many units of cost were added during the month of August. These units were in beginning inventory. We have the assumption that all direct materials were added at the beginning of the process. So how much did we have to add in the month of August? Nothing. All of the direct materials for those beginning inventory units were added in July. We're told that in the exercise. 
Now we're further told that these units were 75% completed. So that means 75% of the conversion work was done in July as well. And that means we had 25% more or 9,000 equivalent whole units of conversion work that still needed to be done in the month of August. I'm just gonna skip back to the exercise again to remind you of what we already know. So the first thing we would have done in August is finish up those 36,000 units. We then we started another 200,000. We finished a total of 196,000. Again, the first 36,000 were for beginning inventory. And so 196 minus 36, 160,000 of the 200,000 units we started this month, 160,000 were completed and the other 40,000 make up this ending inventory down here. So of the units we started this month, 160,000 were completed and 40,000 make up our ending inventory. One of the nice things about this template is it does give us a way of checking ourselves in a couple different spots. We have numbers that need to match. And here's the first one. So we have 236,000 units to be accounted for here on line nine. And down here on line 16, we've accounted for all of them. At least we know where they are at the end of the month. Now we can finish up our equivalent unit calculations. So for row 13, these are units that were started and completed. In other words, we added all of the cost this month. That's 160,000 units of direct materials and 160,000 units of conversion costs. We can go ahead and put in our totals here. I'm using formulas specifically so that when I upload this template, you can see where my numbers are coming from. If you look at the template, you'll be able to see the formulas. For these units that were in ending inventory, we have that that assumption that all direct materials are added at the beginning of the process. Since we started those 40,000 units in August, we would have added all of the direct materials in August. But the given information tells us that these units in ending inventory are only half done. That's 50% of the conversion costs included or equivalent to 20,000 whole units of conversion costs. Now, again, just a reminder, conversion costs include both direct labor as well as overhead. We're going to be combining those costs together and we assume that those costs are incurred uniformly throughout the production process. So if we say that they're half done, that means we have half of the conversion costs or units of conversion costs already included. And so now we have all the units we need and we can proceed to our next step which is going to be a calculation of how much did it cost us per unit. So our next line here, row 22, these are for costs that were incurred this period. So we need how much did we add for direct materials this period? And right here, we can see that for the direct materials, 200,000 units of direct materials cost a total of $450,000. So I'm just going to plug that into the template here. $450,000 worth of direct materials were added to the process. Well, how about our conversion costs? As I just explained, the conversion costs are going to include both direct labor. Let me add these up here. Direct labor of $207,900. And it will also include the overhead. So our overhead costs $680,400. And that gives us a total for conversion costs this period of $888,300. So now we, we're going to use those units that we calculated in the first step of the problem. We added 200,000 units of direct materials at a total cost of $450,000. That gives us a cost per equivalent unit. I just divided the total cost and curve this period divided by the total equivalent units this period. And that gives us the cost per equivalent unit. Same thing here for conversion costs. And we can see that the direct materials cost 225, the conversion costs were 470. If we combine those, we can see that for units that were complete, started and completed this period, our total cost per unit would have been $6.95. 
That's the combination of the direct material and the conversion cost per unit. Now, again, I need some additional information that was given in the problem. Our beginning inventory was $207,360. So I need to put that in here. Costs added this period we, would be the combination of the direct materials plus the conversion costs. And adding those together, we know the total costs to be accounted for. And this go, is going to be another spot that we're going to be able to check ourselves. When we finish the final step of this template, the final line says total costs accounted for. Well, it better match the total cost to be accounted for. So again, it gives us a way of checking ourselves. How did we do? Did we get this right? Now let's finish up the template. So we have our beginning work in process right there. Our cost to complete that beginning inventory. Well, we added zero units of direct materials. We know that because the exercise tells us all direct materials are added at the beginning of the process. The direct materials for those units are already included in the $207,360. So I could have just put in a zero there. Um, zero units at any price would be a total of $0. And then our conversion cost, three, sorry, 9,000 units of conversion costs were added at a total of $4.70 each, 9,000 times $4.70. And I'm just going to add across and then add down. So we know that the units that were um, in beginning inventory cost a total of $249,660. The next step is the units started and completed. That was the 160,000 units that we identified, whoops, sorry, that we identified there, my formula in here, 160,000 units at $2.25 for direct materials and 160, thousand units at four dollars and seventy cents for conversion costs the units started and completed total widen that column a little bit one million one hundred twelve thousand dollars so the costs that were transferred out should be one million three hundred sixty one thousand six hundred sixty dollars if we go back to our problem we can check ourselves because there's that number that's the amount that was transferred out. So that tells us we're on a pretty good track here. And then we know that the ending inventory had a value of 184,000. So let's go finish that up. The ending inventory consisted of 40,000 units. We added all the direct materials to those at $2.25 each. And then we did 20,000 units of conversion work at $4.70 each. So adding across, we better match that number that I just showed you in the exercise, 184,000, and it does. And then our final step is to make sure that this final number here matches with the cost to be accounted for, and it does. So we've completed the, the template, and now we can use the information that's here organized in a, in a way that's familiar to us, a way that we are accustomed to seeing this, we'll be able to answer all of the questions that were asked in this exercise. So direct materials cost per equivalent unit, we had it right in that template at $2.25 and conversion costs were $4.70. Cost of beginning work and process completed during August was this number right here, total cost for beginning inventory, 249,660. Cost of units started and completed during, off, during August is the next total down um, right here. Cost for units started and completed, 1,112,000. And the cost of the ending work in process was actually given right here in the exercise, but it's the next line down in our template as well. <clears throat> and finally, assuming that the direct materials cost is the same for July and August, so that's the $2.25, did the conversion cost per equivalent unit increase, decrease, or remain the same? And I need to do one more calculation here to determine that. 
<clears throat> excuse me, and I'll put the calculation, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll put that calculation right here on the screen for us. So you can see where my numbers are coming from. So we're talking about the costs from the beginning inventory. And from number three here, we know that's $249,660. And that's for 36,000 units. So I'm just calculating our cost per unit, 249,660 divided by 36,000 units gives me a cost per unit of $6.93 and a half cents per, per unit. Well, what did we say the cost for August was? It was $225 plus $470 or $695. So our costs have gone up. If our direct materials stayed the same and our total went up, then it must be that the conversion cost per unit went up. And so we're going to put an increase there. And now we've answered all of the questions. I'm just going to put my green check marks in there so we can see. And that is the conclusion of exercise four for chapter 17. So as I said, I'll be uploading the completed template and this video. And if you have any questions on that, please let me know.